Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 12, <laughs> Episode 7. Um, if you have not done so, this is my Harry Potter onesie. Okay, my Harry Potter onesie. Anyway, I like it. And it's, you know... It's cozy. Anyway, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. And book girl, come on, Jaybird, Jaybird, dun 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 dun. Okay, and all that goodness and stuff. You can also like, comment, and share this video. Follow me on IG at J underscore leads underscore corner. And always hit the notification bell because that's how you know I got new videos, okay? That's how you know. And if yours ain't working, unclick it and then reclick it. Just saying. So let's just get it started up in here. <clears throat> in here. Okay. My throat be scratched up when I do that. But anyway, so we see Cynthia and Kenya meeting up. Okay, over at Cynthia's house because Cynthia needs to make sense of her closet to make room for Mike whenever he comes to visit or to live with her in Atlanta. Now, first of all, Cynthia Cynthia is messy. She, she most cl my closet is messy. Okay? As y'all see, this is stuff here that when uh, this is somebody's gift. But um but you already know what it is, so it's fine. Um, so if you're watching this, he he's already seen it. Anyway, but yeah, the closet is just messy. Okay, she has a lot of stuff, and it's it it just seemed like she need to hire somebody to build her closet to hold all that she has. And because she hasn't done that, it seemed like she doing like makeshift stuff. It don't look right. You know, Kenya has an amazing closet, as she said, and so she wanted Kenya's help to figure out how to make room for Mike. Girl, her closet seems small, and so she made a bedroom a closet. And so the bedroom that she made a closet, she just put, like, clothing racks in there versus making it an actual closet. Girl, her those are small closet spaces. I'm just saying my closet spaces look bigger than that. I'm just going to say that right now. But, yeah, Cynthia just need to clean up a little bit, just like I do. Just I got clothes everywhere okay <laughs> everywhere so when i move i'm li i'm literally i i need closet space period okay anyway so we just gonna put this here and put that there get a little island you know he has his sad you have your sad but have y'all even talked about did, are y'all even engaged like why have y'all talked about she like girl did you and mike was his name Michael Mark? Did you and Mark talk about that before y'all got married? Y'all got married in two seconds. She's like, that's why I'm advising you of this. Girl, she said last time I checked in, your husband did not live in Atlanta either. So you can't talk about me and Mike. I said, girl, it looked like Mike come to visit uh, Cynthia more than Mark come to visit Kenya. But I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say that. So they sit down and chit-chat about, you know what I'm saying, what happened to Marlo even or whatever. You know how Marlo was upset. Now, can you bring about, well, Marlo is always out here judging, seeing, doing personal attacks on people or whatever. Look, Marlo is messy. She is. Marlo does throw a lot of shade at people's personal situations. I guess key thing was... She can't throw no shade to me business well because she ain't got no business, so I can't her event and promote it my business. But I feel like Kenya and Marlo won't be friends because I think Marlo will always dig at Kenya. And in return, Kenya will dig at Marlo. So if girl was it was. So since they bring up with y'all stay and I should have left or whatever because I was just trying to ask Marlo if, you know, she was the one excuse me, who recorded, who made the recording or whatever, but when you came to a band, honey, I just did not do that, so it was what it was. But she do bring up how she, I feel like Marlo know about the recording because if Candy know, who isn't even that close with Nene, I know for a fact that Nene then told Marlo, but Marlo ain't told me. But that's crucial because I know that Marlo's alliance and her allegiance is with Nene. But again, I feel like it's going to be weird for me to add a person who I've known for years. Did you secretly record me? I feel like we all know is Giovanna. 
I, I think that I think if Anna felt like it'll be a great big secret, it's it's not. And as my mama said when I talked to her, she's like, didn't Yvonne say when she was talking to Nini at the time or whatever about how to this and this and that or whatever? Didn't she say that she had that she had proceeds? I said, yeah, she did say that. So again, we know it's Yvonne. We don't uh, from uh, from from Clark Atlanta C A U girl. We don't care. We don't. And I feel like she did that, probably trying to get her a spot on the show. But girl, no. You like Nene is using you. And she gonna dispose of you like she do everybody else. But I'm my girl it was what it was. But again, she's like I know what's between Marlo and Yvonne. Because that's who I've talked about Nene too, who will go back and say things to Nene. I said, Okay. So we do see Candy and Carl meet up or whatever, but for no reason. For no reason at all. You know what I'm saying? We see uh, Todd taking Ace. I'm going to guess to school because he was leaving, going somewhere, whatever. And Candy brings up how life is just so, so, so busy. So when Carmen comes home, her, her girlfriend Carmen, um, it's like, the Todd told me he that he bought a tractor trailer. And I did see him because I do follow, I do follow Todd. Do I follow Todd? I think I do follow him on IG. And he did post a video like months ago. Um, of him getting a, a tractor trailer. And I guess it's a new business venture, as he said, or whatever. And she said, like, it's just so much between the tractor trailer. We want a Mexican restaurant or whatever. We, You know, Ty wants to do an OLG breakfast type restaurant or whatever. And plus the baby. I have a new, you know, lipstick line coming or whatever. So it's so much that we have working on, but we need to kind of focus on this baby. Candy always, to me, has 18,000 products going at the same time. She is always working on the bag. But I mean, girl, do what you can do. So, you know, she do bring up how, you know, Todd and Kayla aren't talking right now. Um, to where, you know, not only is Todd not talking to Kayla, Kayla ain't talking to him. So they is, they not talking at all or whatever you know she brings up how i just think todd is just not good with girl like it's weird because it's not this kayla even riley would say you know how she don't like little stuff that todd may say or how, or how he may handle something so she's like riley would come to me and say well he shouldn't have said that or he he should not even be involved in that so she's like it's just todd don't know how to handle female children now, I, I mean if you think about it todd wasn't a birth of a from birth father with Riley, meaning he wasn't there when Tasha was born. He didn't find out that she was his daughter for years. So it's just different. You know what I'm saying that he he from New York. So I think he just don't have that soft, squishy bone in his body just yet or whatever. So I say whatever. So we do see later on Kayla's packing to leave to move to New York and we Ty wasn't there. Because why her and Todd are not talking right now. So, you know, I'm my girl. So, Kayla do bring up how, you know what I'm saying, she nervous to be going back to New York, whatever. But she just, you know, she want to get get over whatever. And like Candy brings up how I really do want to do more for Kayla. But Ty, you know, kind of won't let me do it because, you know, he brings up how she's grown. So, Candy does her, you know, her little speak on it on her own, on her own YouTube page or whatever. And her and Ty was on there tonight. And Ty was like... People is acting as if I'm being mean or whatever. He like they don't get the reason I be saying for Candy not to do certain things. He say, you know what I'm saying? He like I don't think it's fair or I, I don't think we should give her money to leisurely spend on stuff when she may have like a credit card bill. Like why would we give her a thousand bucks to spend on you know what I'm saying frivolous things if she has a two thousand dollar credit card bill due? And then Candy said, well I I get your point. I I get that you want to teach her. To be responsible, so let's not just give her money to blow when she has bills that she needs to pay. She said, but at the same time, if it's her birthday, you know, why would I not give her some money? And then it's up to her to do with it what she sees fit or whatever, you know. And I, I when Todd put it that way, I got what he meant. But at the same time, people keep bringing up how Todd is in the situation now to make money because he's married to Candy. Not saying he would not have been successful on his own right without Candy, but Candy still puts you in an arena that you weren't in yet. Okay, so you have access to things now that you did not have before. I still don't think he's using her at all. I think Todd is a very credible, hardworking dude, and he and he does well for himself. I think his thing is, my daughter's an adult. She's 23. And he also, it's something else that he said. He said, a person can't call themselves grown when they can't take care of themselves but then still expect to make rules in their parents house so i feel like it could be a thing to where you know kayla on 23 i remember myself at that age when you feel like you're grown but you're not really like the bills i pay now 
is nothing compared to what I wasn't paying when I was in my early 20s. You know what I'm saying? So I get what he can mean where she thinks she grown. She thinks she grown and she may say things like, I'm a grown, I'm an adult. You know, you can't, you know, you can't make whatever. So, okay, you, th you grown, okay, I'm going to let you be grown. Be grown. You know what I'm saying? You can't expect us to kind of just give you money. Do what you, be grown and adult and, and take care of yourself. So I get what he means, but I, we, they're not going to show that on the show. They're not going to go into detail about that. But I got him explaining what he really meant about that. And I said, oh, okay, that makes sense to me. Kayla out here wanted to be grown and she ain't paying, and she ain't paying our bills. So, but Candy wanted to just help because Candy's just helpful. And Ty, like, no, let her be grown. And so, for that reason, her and Ty be bumping heads. And I was like, I, I, I get it now. But again, Ty still needs to be a little bit softer because the world gonna eat that girl up. Period. Period. And you need to make sure that your kids always know if the world is eating them alive. They can always come home to their parents. And, you know, Candy brought up how, like, Riley, you know, Riley usually, if she do something, if she say something, she don't do it. So, when Riley said, I'm going to leave and I'm not going to move back home, I believe her. You know what I'm saying? And then Ty said, well, we just have to see what happens because a person may think that when they're here under this bubble. When you go out and you have to spend your own money, it's, com it's completely different. Ooh, it's like, look, if you are at home to your parents or not paying a lot of rent or whatever, you lucky. You're, oh, Lord. So, again, it, it, to me, watching Speak One Between Kenny and Ty, it shed a little bit more light into what it's about. It don't mean tied off the hook at all. But I get what he means about things. Anyway, I didn't ramble on, on, on long enough for that. Um, We do see Marlon and Portia riding around on like a little portable bar thing, the thing you ride around or whatever and get drunk. I forgot what it's called. But, but they on that thing riding around. They're riding around and getting it. Now, I would not do that because I don't want to have to be riding a bike and drinking. I don't. I don't want to have to pedal the, pedal the bike and be I want to just drink <laughs> or ride a bike. I don't want to do both at the same time. Okay? Now, Marlo gets to talking about, oh, you know, I think sometimes all the ladies, you know what I'm saying, are not really being real or whatever. I think Nene is the, the realest one because, you know what I'm saying, she was so honest about what was going on with her and Greg. But you, Portia, I'm saying, you have not talked to any of, the, any of the ladies about what's going on with you and Dennis. And I'm like, why? Marlo consistently comes and, like, Tries to big up Nene when Nene ain't in. I think Nene said, you know what? If I'm not in the scene, you need to speak about me in a positive way. Okay? You have to do that. Because I'm like, why you keep bringing up with, girl, we don't, let let Nene be what she going to be over there. With her new nose, her new face. Let, let that be over there. Anyway, you know, poor like I don't feel like Nene was that open. You know what I'm saying? And for me, I just have not spoke about it because I don't want to keep having to rehash what happened just I'm, I'm still in it so you know what I'm saying it is what it is so but she but I don't think Nene was being forthcoming and she really wasn't so she brings up how she still is upset with Nene for Nene um coming at her and calling her fat or whatever when right after she had the baby and we seen it all go down on social media where Nene was there was texting back and forth and Nene was saying this you old fat this and I'm looking like she just had a baby she not fat she just had a baby just had a baby and Portia still look great after having the little bit girl I was still shocked at that or whatever and then I'm not gonna say we well, you know what Michelle Obama say when they go low we go high Portia said bitch I am Portia fucking Williams okay and that is Nene Edgeless that is Nene Edgeless Leaks I say bitch not Edgeless I said ooh girl okay and she said you know she came at me for no reason whatever and since that I, she don't she don't know how to be a friend um Nene has offended everyone in one way or the other on this show. And the fact that she has offended everyone in one way or the other on the show, Nene has to realize she's the common denominator. She's the issue. And I get that Marla want to kiss ass or whatever, and she wants to also be on the show, but you can't be Ryan acting as if Nene, you know, oh, she said something bad. Like, don't, don't care about that. You say, go high. No. No, I just won't talk to her ass, okay? At all. And he's gonna be like, well, you know, we, every time this happens, you know I'm saying, you know, God do us wrong, I'm saying, we forgive God, whatever, but we can't forgive our female friends, like, we, we can't forgive our female friends. Um, we, we, we she said, we, we be with guys, we put our body on the line, you know saying, we get diseases. I said, diseases? Poor said, diseases? Who said that? Who can diseases? Not me, bitch. You know what I mean? I don't. 
<laughs> I do not at all. I know nothing about diseases, bitch. Not no, 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 no. And so, of course, like, look, I'm not going to put up with foolishness from some man, let alone Nene. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to do that. It is what it is. Now, we see them riding around and getting into whatever. They end up riding up to Dennis's hot dog restaurant. And I'm saying, I don't want to go in here. I don't, I want to, I want to go home. Portia, go to the goddamn hot dog. So they go in there reluctantly or whatever, and then Marlo FaceTime Dennis for Portia so they can talk, whatever. We at your restaurant or whatever. Say hi, Portia. She's like, hey. Well, no, Portia. Okay, say you love him. And I'm like, Marlo, why are you asking Portia or, or trying to force Portia to tell the man who cheated on her while she was pregnant that she loves him? Why are you, girl, Mar Marlo, Marlo, hush. Sit down somewhere and just be quiet. And and Portia was like, I don't want to do that. Just yet. We're going to counsel, whatever. We got in the conversation. And so, until then, I'm not going to tell that man that I love him, okay? I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I'm, I just realized I just not want to fight for my family. But I'm not ready to tell him that I love him yet. But we know she do. Nene meets with her spiritual advisor. First of all, I don't know if this woman is really a spiritual advisor or if she just has spirits advising her. Okay, all of her sister with the liquor or whatever. So, you know, she brings up how original faith they need, original teeth they need, love to fight. They love to argue, whatever. It was a debate. She loves to do that. That's what old faith they need did. This faith they need wants peace. Peace in her life. With her friends or whatever. So, you know, she brings on her and Greg is doing good. We're doing well now, whatever. But I, I'm still waiting for Greg to admit some things so that we can move forward, okay? I need him to admit some things so that, you know what I'm saying, we can get back to where we were. I said, oh, okay. She then brings up how, you know, and I was at this event or whatever. And Kenya showed up with a marching man or whatever. And I felt like if I stayed there, I may fight her, okay? So, I left to avoid, you know what I'm saying, fussing and fighting with Kenya. Because I want to be a better person or whatever, you know what I'm saying? She then brings up, but I was, you know, there was Marlo's event. And, you know what I'm saying, I felt like, you know what I'm saying, I should have been there for her as a friend. But I didn't want to be fussing and fighting or whatever. So, what I want to do is... I I want to get the sisterhood back with the ladies. I want that. But I don't want to have to apologize for anything because I don't know what I will be apologizing for. I say, wait, let me get this straight. You want your husband to admit things to you so that you can forgive him, but you're not willing to admit or apologize for things that you have done to other people, but you want to be their friend. I'm like, how is, ain't that a double negative? The magnets don't attract. That's north, north, south, south, west, west, east, east. Some ain't adding up. Okay, it's girl. I said, who in their right mind says, I want to be friend with you. I want to have this. I want this. But I don't want to say sorry. Because I don't know why I would have to say sorry. Did you not watch the same season we watched? Did you? I feel like Nene was so busy on her nose, her face limp, that she ain't watched last season. And I feel like she just... Is this, this this blindly unaware of the shitstorm that she made of her friendships? It's foolishness, and this is the kicker: Mimi is mad, or was mad with Cynthia for Cynthia allegedly inviting Kenya to her event. Marlo also invited Kenya to her her hair thing. So were you not mad at Marlo for inviting Kenya? You were just mad at Cynthia for inviting Kenya. Is that what it is, girl? I just, I don't understand. I do, Nene really is full of shit. I just, I don't know what else to say besides that or whatever. And all the lady said was, well, you know what I'm saying, um, at times people need to ask themselves if they could have done things differently or how they would have done things differently in order to be in a better place. I don't think she's a true spiritual advisor. I don't, okay? Her dress don't even look spiritual advisory. Like, I'm just saying, no. Mm -mm. And she got on lip liner. People, if, if, spiritual advisors don't wear lip liner. They just, they don't. And that, they don't. I'm going, I'm going to leave it at that. So, okay. I don't believe it. But if Nene wants us to believe that she's been spiritually advised, that's on Nene. Now, we see a little scene with Cynthia and her mic. And Eva and her mic. I'm like, oh, all the mics coming up around here. Okay. And it was simple. They went, they was doing some folding. Or the, is the folding? Is when you have the bowling ball pins and the football 
and you throw the football at the ball. I, I think it's called fouling. I, I don't know. It's this the the football and the bowling pins thing or whatever. So they went there. Okay, now we see how Cynthia and Mike brings up how they trying to figure out if they gonna you know live in L.A. or Atlanta. Okay, gotta figure out they could they discuss a marriage. That is definitely on the table. He's made it clear. We, I'm going to propose. We, we know that already, but I, we need to figure out where we're going to live or whatever. So, they both, you know, feel like him saying, we'll figure it out, though. Okay. So, they then get into somebody recording Cynthia. And, you know, Eva's husband, Mike, who's an attorney, you know, brings up, you know, like, legally, as long as that person was in the conversation, it's not illegal for them to record you but if they were not in the conversation and they're a third party and they record two other people talking that is illegal so again you do have to figure out who it was and what on the tape or whatever and so you know uh cynthia's mic is like whoever did it you know what i'm saying is a piece of shit i said oh come on now mike i am very protective of, i'm protective of her okay i just think they have, they have a piece of shit i said oh i like mike i do i hope he moves to atlanta and he becomes, gets so much, I, I like when the guys kind of hang out or whatever. It's just different. And he seemed like he fit in well. So, I, I think that's kind of cool. So, as soon as I just feel like it's either Yvonne or Marvel. I say, girl, we, we do too. We do too. Um, They talked some other stuff, but I didn't really care uh, too much. Um, They then play up the little game or whatever. They say if the men win... Cynthia has to move to, to L.A., but if the women win, you know, Mike has to move to Atlanta. Of course, the men won, because Cynthia, I just think she's not athletic. And then Eva's, like, nine months pregnant, so she can't do too much or whatever. And so, you know, the men win, and so, oh, Cynthia has to move to L.A. I don't think Cynthia moved to L.A. I don't, mainly because she's on a, a TV show that's filmed in Atlanta, but so was Mike. Dang. Well, she can be in L.A. when she's not filming. They'll figure it out. Um, We do see Kenya go to see a lawyer to discuss our assets. Now, her and, 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 and Mark did not get a prenup. She said because Mark felt like a prenup was not romantic. Girl, are you dumb? But she also brings up how he has more assets than she does. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't know. But I'm like, I think he wants your money. He knocks you up. And he wanted to get child support. Girl. Anyway, so she brings up how, you know, her assets is her hair care company, whatever. Her house was, you know, is worth like $1.8 or whatever. And so she wants to be sure that if, you know, if anything happens, her assets will be, go to her daughter. And, you know, her daughter will always be taken care of. And I say, well, that's smart. But you should have done that by getting a prenup. Anyway, the lawyer brings up how, you know, well... Does he, you know, have money? She's like, well, yeah, he has more money than me. He has other children as well. So if something happens to him, like, his assets would go to all of his children. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, for me, I would need to make sure that, you know what I'm saying, my stuff goes to my daughter. Um, because I don't want it to go to, like, him. So they talk about either getting, like, a, a will or a trust or whatever. And she kind of explained it, too. And she did not want to, like, a, 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 a will or whatever. But if it was a trust, someone would have to be power of attorney. And she did not want to make her husband her power of attorney. She said, because if he does not agree with something, he just wouldn't do it. And so it would make no sense to have him as her POC, POC, her POA, if she knows that if he doesn't like something, that he just won't do it. And so she was like getting emotional. She was like crying. I'm like, girl, stop crying over that man. Leave that man. Okay, because he just don't seem like he loves you. It's just so sad, you know, since truth be told. And so it's like, I'm going to get to figure it out or whatever, and I will, you know, see which one I want to do later because I'm just, I'm just team too much right now. But the lawyer do say, like, I'll get it all drawn up for you or whatever, and then we can talk about it later and get it done. Um, I think it's smart. You have younger kids and you are in your late 40s to want to think about, okay, I want to be sure my assets go to my child because, again, People pass away and they have assets and that should be up in court. The family would be fussing over it or whatever. You want to be sure to know where it's going. Like my stuff going to my mama, okay? And I said, my guy, if I pass away before you do, give all my stuff away. <laughs> Don't keep my stuff. You know what I'm saying? The money from my life insurance policy is all yours, okay? You know what I'm saying? Because it's easy and I don't have children, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I would not change... My benefit, I will not change that stuff until I'm like, 
married for like a while. Like, I don't want to like be a year in because I don't know. Because at a year and one day, you can piss me off, whatever. So she going to get it figured out. Uh, she really needs to. And then lastly, Portia and, and Dennis go to counseling. And girl, they both look like, he looked like he just did not want to be there. He, I'm like, what is he, I? And then the tracksuit. We don't dress like this in Detroit. He's from here. I wonder if he's really from Detroit or if he's from like Dearborn or Inkster or one of our surrounding cities because we don't dress. We don't do this. We don't. I'm just going to say that or whatever. So, you know, Dennis gets there or whatever. And Portia was just, she was just, she was, she was, she was, she was all of her energy, was, she was drained. I'll say that, okay? So, Dennis admits that he did cheat, okay? He admits that he cheated. Now, it seemed like he cheated during her pregnancy and probably after the pregnancy. I'm saying it seemed like it was very, very much so both. Um... And Portia's hurt from that, okay? Because for the most part, her thing was the whole pregnancy we were together, okay? We was having sex the whole pregnancy, whatever, you know? And he then brought up, you know, we had issues that we had. There were many issues with the pregnancy the whole time, during and after, or whatever. And I'm like, Lord, he said, I just made a mistake and I cheated. She was like, cheating is not a mistake. Mistake is getting off on the wrong exit. You know, cheating, you planned to do this. Like, you can't accidentally plan to meet up with somebody because I saw the inappropriate text. So, you know, you planned this. I say, girl, tell me about it. Now, as he was talking, this fool then said, well, you know, during pregnancy, sex really wasn't, you know, what a man usually wants or whatever. He was saying it was different. It's, she pregnant. I'm like, Dennis is such an ass. So, again, girl, if I get Portia wants her family. I get that. But Dennis, girl, I just make him work for it. You know what I'm saying? Make him work for it or whatever. So, you know, but he like, she like, look, we were together. We're having sex. So what do you, why would you then go out and cheat? He said it was just, you know what I'm saying? It was a um, a poor, selfish decision. And I regret it. He didn't say regret. He said, but I do love Portia. And I keep letting her know that she, she, that she is my priority. And Portia thing is, I'm hurt that you went out and did this as if, we wasn't good. You know what I'm saying? We were good. At least I thought he was good or whatever. And you went out and cheated or whatever. And it's been hard and I'm hurt. And I need our daughter to know that. You know what I'm saying? If you hear that you want to be here. You want to be here to be a good man to me. To be a good dad to her. You know what I'm saying? I want you to be here for a reason. Because you want to be out here with your loins. You know what I'm saying? Doing things like go and do that. And we can just go parent. Like you don't have to be here. But if you want to be here, then you need to perform an effort to be here with me. Because if else, you know what I'm saying, it's just hurting me more and more and more. I say, go ahead, girl. Let him know how you feel, okay? Um, he like, I want my family. You know what I'm saying? I don't want this copier. I, I want you, girl. Well, then stop cheating. And stop looking like you don't want to be here. You should be here. Okay, you know the damn song. Anyway, Portia... You know, brings up how you know it's a work in progress. I can't just up and forgive you. I can't do that. And then the doctor then brings up, but it's because you, you you still love him. She said, well, I do, but I didn't want to tell him that I still love him because I did not want him to feel like me saying that I still love you means I forgive you. And then you'll stop trying to fix it. You'll stop trying to make it better. You'll stop trying to work to get it better, whatever. And I didn't want to do that, but I thought like I had to like let that go to work at this to get us to your family again or whatever. And then they're like, okay. And they kind of hug or whatever and say they're going to try to work on it, honey. And then, and her confession, I don't know, you know, it could be six months, it could be a year. I don't know how long it's going to take me to forgive him. It took a few weeks <laughs> because they were together, you know, as a couple or whatever. And her ring was back on when she was in, at, at kind of all. So, I mean, and they're together now. Okay, because he was, you know, we still kind of engaged. And the doctor said, she ain't got no ring on her ring. And she's like, I sure don't. He said, yeah, girl, she need a whole new ring, truth be told. Um, But again, she like, I don't know how long it's going to take me to forgive him. I don't know because it could take a long time. I don't know, but I'm going to see. Girl, it took a couple weeks. And I ain't mad. I'm not mad at it. But again, girl, have fun with it. And then, you know, we seen they, they came separately. Like, she got there first. He got there after her. But they left together in her car. 
You sure do look good. She's like, thank you. Now I like the fact that you, you know what I'm saying, was honest and then she was honest about what happened or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for that. He said, okay, can I come over? She was like, no. He came over and banged it out. Girl, bye. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? But it's her family. It's, it's, it's up to her to do what she wants to do. I just hope that Dennis is really worth it. Anyway, I'm done. Peace.